speaking with the former uh, special advisor on media and publicity to the previous governor of Abia State, Governor Kezi Pazu, and the chief press secretary as well, in the person of Ajin Naya Apollos. You're welcome back to the program, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Uh, I wonder what happened at the moment we we are about bringing up issues that have to do with the uh, Abia State. Uh, that thing happened, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we've conquered it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all right that's yeah. by the way so i was trying to uh, uh drag your attention to the issue of salary payment it was one of the uh, uh talk about issues in your uh principal's administration that's the pdp's administration but mm -hmm. so, yeah a few days ago the local government workers protested on payment of salary even under the current administration of governor alex oti i believe something has been done about that because as of yesterday we heard about uh, uh, the rain of salary that fell i don't know about that so what's your reaction on this particular one well, well the issue of salary payments and workers agitating for their salary would, would be a continuous issue and the agitation as far as government and governance in nigeria is concerned it is not uh, particularly uh, a problem of any particular regime or any particular system unfortunately when we were there, the people who are there today didn't think uh, it, it's, uh, it's going to be their turn. Uh, when we were there, they were making all kinds of politics about it. Unfortunately, today it's their turn, and uh, the same cry is still there. But what I want to say is that, uh, yes, as much as it is the right of a worker to get his way, sometimes there may be issues that may not, that may affect uh, um, payment of salary as at when you are not. I'm not trying to hold bill for the government. Mm. But in the case of this government, I think they should not even have any reason now not to pay because, like I said earlier, the removal of subsidy has increased the allocation for the three tiers of government. Uh, there is more money now than we ever had. Uh, so, um, much as I do not really know exactly what they are giving as their own excuses for why they are not being able to pay salaries, but I know that they have more money now. Uh, they should be able to pay uh, their salaries. I understand also they are trying to do by metrics, um, which is which is normal. Which is a good thing to do. It's a way to go because um, we, we really need to find out who is working and who is not working in order to 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 know who you are paying. But again, like the argument has been put out there, um, if you are doing by metrics, please follow the due process that it should be so that you don't offend certain workers. And uh, also, let us know uh, those that you have identified are not the workers. You, you, you publish them so that the whole world will know uh, and all of that. So, uh, as far as I know, um, the government today in, in, in Nigeria, not just only in Nigeria, the state governments today in Nigeria, they have more funds because of the removal of the subsidy that has uh, added more money to them. So, they have the governors and the state governments have more money now to pay as much as they, they should be able to pay workers salary right uh, talking about uh, publishing the identified uh, ghost workers uh, do you see that to be a problem yes it, it is uh, it should be it's a normal thing if you have identified something wrong if you have identified that someone has been a particular identity or individual quote and unquote has been taking salary and is not the worker. Publish that person. Or are you just trying to identify ghost workers? Are they not supposed to be published, punished? Or whoever. Somebody must have been taking uh, that money. Because I know that in our administration, we were not paying salaries by hand. They were all being paid through the bank. Assuming that somebody uh, has, is, has the use is taking double salary with accounts, they are busy and they are not to identify the person. If you found out, for instance, that any Neapolis was taking three, four, salaries from different places in government. Please, punish me. Tell the whole world that in our exercise in Ministry A, we've been able to identify out of 20 workers, according to what the ministry says is what is taking salary, out of 20, only 15 are you workers. The other five are this name, this name, and this name. This is the account number. This is how long they've taken this money. They should make, they should, they should refund the money uh, to the government. So if you, if you have not done that, you have not concluded your exercise, not until you publish the list, the names of the quote and unquote ghosts. And this thing we call ghost workers is wrong to say so, because they're actually not ghosts. Somebody is receiving the money. The money is being paid into an account. 
someone is the owner of that account. Because I know that government of other states in the past eight years that we were there were paying salaries to accounts. So if this current government say that they have identified people who were taking salaries from government and they say that are not workers, they should publish them. That's that's just the argument. That's what it should be. Publish the name so that the whole world will know the people and uh, not just come to say we have identified two thousand ghost workers. Um, they, that were taking salary. Please let us know these 2,000 ghost workers. Let us also know how much they were taking and for how long they've taken those amounts so that we now know what is supposed to be coming back to the state cover going forward. And if we are, if we are going to prosecute them, let us prosecute them for taking uh, money when they are not working. I think for me, that's my own opinion. It's very enough to say uh, you have um, identified ghost workers. And like I said, I, I don't appreciate what we call it ghost workers. Let us find the real thieves, the people who were taking money from government for not working. All right, sir. An ugly incident occurred on Tuesday in Aba, precisely, where the convoy of the Commissioner of Trade, Commerce and Investment was attacked in Aba. And then, unfortunately, two policemen were gunned down. But as a result of that particular when there's been this phase of between security operatives and traders within that particular axis what is your reaction to uh, this one though the governor was there yesterday of course i was there also to see uh things for myself okay um i, I was a little bit taken aback when i read the police report uh, saying talking about the convoy of the commissioner i, I now started wondering the commissioner in Abena having a convoy that, uh, uh, contrary to what the government today in the state talks about running, uh, um, reducing cost of government, the fact that the commissioner is using convoy is something that Abena should also ask. At that stage, it's unfortunate that that incident happened. Um, I, I wouldn't know why anybody would want to attack a public, a public officer, uh, a commissioner for that matter. I wouldn't know why, I wouldn't know. Like the police said, because I read carefully the report of the police, they said they were going to conduct investigation. The, the police were detailed in their in their report or in their release uh, where they told us the police officer that died, the one that, that is attached to the commissioner, and the other officer that's not attached to the commissioner. So let us not think that both police, police officers were attached to the commissioner. They also went for that to talk about government vehicle being born. That's where I became, personally, I became worried. Because government vehicle is easy to identify. The, the government healers must have a government number plate or maybe a government uh, inscription on it. But however, whatever the situation, the police say, the police and the government say they are investigating. We, we really want them to go through, go full detail into the investigation and bring the corporate to book. It's unfortunate that that happened and um, two beautiful souls, Nigerians, were killed in the process. Those who are serving the country as the law enforcement agency. They, they were killed in the process. It's quite unfortunate. I commiserate with their families. I also commiserate with the commissioner for the attack and also commiserate with the government. And also to our people in Aba who also had to suffer the reprisal uh, because the law enforcement agents went overboard when they were destroying. I saw videos of the you know, Keke people being destroyed. Something that happened at Samek, uh, while coming to Brass Junction to destroy Keke, destroy people's businesses, to shut down people's businesses. That wasn't too fine. I understand that the police, the, the security agencies were reacting to the fact that uh, one or two of them were killed. But at the same time, um, that shouldn't have caused the kind of reprisal that we saw. Uh, it's also fine that the governor eventually visited there yesterday. I saw that also. He visited the market and uh, uh, called on them to call the situation kind of and uh, ask for, not, for businesses to resume, for people to go about their businesses. But please, we really want to know what what would have caused the attack on the commissioner, and that that is the commissioner for trade and commerce, whose major bridge is around the market, and these incidents happen around the market too. So please, I, I hope the commissioner, uh, sorry, the government, and the police, the law enforcement agency in Abia, will um, will do do us a favor to get into details of this uh, unfortunate uh, incident. And ensure that it doesn't, whatever may be the cause, doesn't uh, happen again. And those, exactly those behind it, should not be allowed to go free 
uh, they should be made to face the book because uh, uh, attacking a government official is quite unfortunate that uh, that that happened. But like I said, it, it was worrisome to me that the commissioner in Nigeria has a convoy, uh, contrary to what we were told at the beginning of their government. Anyway. All right, uh, that's okay. Let us talk about uh, the probe panel that was established by the state governor. Of course, a few weeks ago, mm -hmm. the governor, Dr. Alex Oti, established uh, the probe panel. Uh, you know the stories mm -hmm. around this particular establishment of the probe panel, talking about uh, government properties and what have you. What is the mm -hmm. former governor's feeling about uh, this probe panel? Also, do you think that uh, he's ready to give in? Is ready to do what? To give in. I do not know what you mean by ready to give in. It is the choice of the governor now to institute a panel, which he has done. And according to him, the, the duty of the panel is to recover government properties mm. and um, government funds. The former governor, I know, is not in possession of any government property as we speak. Uh, the former governor, I know, is also not in possession with government fund. As I know, um, the, the, the panel is there to do their job. If there are people who uh, who are in possession of government properties and government fund, it is the duty of the panel to call them, invite them, and let them explain why the properties of government are in their possession, and also why government funds are in their own possession. Uh, I think the former government is not bothered about that. He, in his usual manner, he will also allow them to, to do their job uh, as far as they know. We all want a prosperous idea. We want, we want a better idea. So I think what the people are saying is that trying to limit your 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 probe panel or your proof to the immediate past government of and the winch homes on the side of the government of today. Bear in mind that uh, the sitting governor today uh, was a part and parcel of previous government before the 80th government. Yes, uh, because uh, he was in the bank, then he was among those who manages the state funds with those governments. So why not begin the probe where, if you really want to get back what belongs to Abia, why not begin the probe uh, from from then that he was part of the government? Unfortunately, he wouldn't want to do that. Uh, but that's fine. Dr. Kezi Oazi is available. I'm sure you know that since he left office, he's been, he's been in his village in Kumota. That's where he lives. Of course, Dr. Kezi Oazi doesn't know who he is out there. We are around that there. He's just in the village in Kumota. So he's very available. Should anybody who wants to uh, invite or sit in for any contribution, I'm sure he's very much around. So, it's the choice of the government to stay in Abia. Whoever they want to prove and all of that. But I, personally, I feel they are followed. And for that, anyone who is in possession of government property that he is not supposed to have should please return to government. If you have government money that's not supposed to be in your possession, please return them to government. They are not yours. That you have, that you are privileged to serve in government does not give you the right to possess government property. It's public property that belongs to everyone. So I think that, for me, I, I have no issues with that. I also think that the former governor has no issues with the pro panel and whatever they are doing, so long as they will not appear to be winch horns or whatever. If they are free. It's not the first time we are hearing of uh, pro panels in Nigeria and all of that. Maybe this may be the first time we are hearing of it in Nigeria. But to welcome development, something must start someday. Generally, um, we, we, they are welcome to do their, their bidding, they are welcome to do the, the whatever they want to do. And I also think that Governor Kizzi, as the former, is also ready and available to answer to his stewardship, to his 80th stewardship to Nadia. All right, uh, let us move on and we away from that particular one. The cases uh, at the tribunal involving the PDP and the state government. Can we have your reaction on these two? Well, I think that matter is before the court. I don't think it would be to the right for me, bearing in mind that. Uh, I, I am a party in that matter. I'm party in the sense that I'm a member of the PDP and my my party is in court. So if I should speak, it will look like I am talking. I'm speaking on a matter that is subjudice. But if you allow me to speak as a freelance journalist that I am today, 
I will simply say that uh, it's a welcome development that Nigerians people are allowed to go to the court to to express whatever grievances they may have that is the outcome of the electoral system and that is what the PDP and her candidates is doing at the tribunal. Um, yes, I'm following everyday activities of the tribunal. It is not mine to comment here, but mind you, I'm speaking as a journalist. Mm. All we're expecting that at the end of the day, the both parties have presented their case, their petitions and all that before the before the tribunal. And based on their arguments and based on what they have put forward, I, I want to believe that at the end of the day that um, the petition the tribunal will do justice to the matter before it. Uh, because part of what Nigerians will want is a, a system that will work for all of us. Most of the times after every election, you see people go to court. It's because they feel aggrieved or the fish have changed. And for eight years we were in government, we were always being taken to court by the current governor. It was his right then. So nobody should also deny anybody his right today to go to court to challenge the process that he or she feels uh, didn't go down well with him. So for, for now, uh, because uh, the matter is still before the uh, tribunal, and uh, that's all that I want to say that let the, let let allow the, the, the tribunal to do its job, and for those of us who are in the PDP, we believe we'll have a good case, and we believe that in the end, that uh, the, the justice will be done in our favor. All right, uh, there are submissions from uh, people that uh, why is PDP going about these issues uh, and then not allow the current administration to uh, deliver dividends? Of governors in Abuja State, do you have a different, or do you have anything it to react to? The same, it is still, it is still the same reason in 2015, Dr. Alex Soti dragged the governor Ibazo in court for four for three years. It's still the same reason in 2019 he repeated something. So why would anybody think that the PDP and the Chief Okahio would not go to court? Is it not their right, or have they lost the right that Alex Soti enjoyed in 2014, 2015, and 2019? Why would anybody question his right to go to court? Especially when part of the issue before the court is talking about uh, constitutional matters. For Christ's sake, it is the right of Chief Ukraine and you and the PDP to go to court. In 2015, Alex Soti exercised this right. In 2019, he exercised the same right. So why would it come now that any right, any person, anybody will question why that should happen? Please. That didn't distract Okezi Bazo from doing so much he did in eight years. Alex Soti dragged okay, uh, Dr. Okezi Bazo in court for three years. In 2015, he didn't stop Dr. Kizik from doing his best. So, if uh, uh, Alex Oti today is even uh, uh, saying that okay, he was being at the tribunal against him, is uh, preventing him from working, then he needs to check himself because Okizik never said so in 2015 and in 2019 when he dragged him all through the Supreme Court. So, that, does, that is not a matter of anybody to even raise at all. It is okay, he was right. So also it is uh, the PDP's right as a political party because uh, uh, Governor Alex Ruti in 2015 and in 2019, like I have repeatedly said here, yeah, it is party we are in court also to challenge the process that felt that they felt we are not in their favor. And in the end, the court ruled against them. So let let them also allow Dr. Kran and the PDP to exercise their right mm. so that in the end, the court will also rule either in favor or not in their favor. So nobody should raise that issue at all. It, it, it is like they are trying to stampede on people's rights, which appears exactly to be what uh, what has been what Abians have been experiencing. Uh, nobody should trample on any other person's rights, and nobody should talk down on anybody. It's quite unfortunate, also, that people don't understand what uh, rights of others are. You can't stop somebody from exercising or speaking of his rights mm. or exercising his rights. No, it's not done anywhere. Not even now will it happen. So the, the matter should go on. Anybody who feels aggrieved should go to court. You know that. I mean, you shouldn't stop anybody from going to court, please. All right. Uh, uh, the program is uh, quite uh, interactive. Very shortly, we'll make open our phone lines for uh, listeners to call in so that we have their own position on the issues we are discussing this morning. No, no problem. All right. No but problem. before that, at this I point, uh, let us touch on your party, talking about the PDP. The PDP today mm -hmm. placed the opposition in the state. What is the future mm -hmm. of PDP after the election? Uh, uh, this is not the first time PDP is in the opposition in Abia. 
remind you that in 2007, mm. uh, the PDP was in the opposition in Abia. Uh, before 2011, PDP, before the 2011 election, PDP regained uh, the position. So uh, it was a brief, PDP has always been in the opposition briefly in Abia. So this is the second time PDP is going to be in the opposition in Abia, so to say. Uh, the party is intact, more intact than any other political party today in Abia. Um, those who are in government today in Abia are not as intact as the PDP. The PDP is in court almost in all fronts, from the governorship and to the other elections. So you don't expect much to happen to the party now. Mm -hmm. because the, the, the party wouldn't want to divide its attention from what is happening at the tribunal. But after being intact, the party is intact. Remind you that PDP is the only party in Abia that has the structure from from the state down to the world level. Uh, for me, I'm from what three would you were. I know I'm in touch with my party and my party leaders. We have uh, our platforms where we interact every development that is going on around our party. I'm sure other people in other worlds also have there. So we don't necessarily expect to see us gather at the party secretariat to meet. We are meeting virtually every day uh, through our various uh, WhatsApp platforms and other communication channels mm -hmm. where we are interacting and um, 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 reviewing issues, uh, hoping that things will turn around very soon and we will regain our position as the ruling party in the state. So the party is, is fine, it's doing well. You, you, you see that the, the party at the state level uh, has been responding to issues that they all need to respond to. And um, even at the world level, they all been responding to issues that uh, they are supposed to respond to. So the party is fine, it's doing fine. Uh, like I said, hoping that uh, our brief stay in the opposition will uh, teach us some good lessons so that if there are things that we didn't do well, that may have cost us going into opposition. That when we get back to power, we will correct them. So for now, PDP is fine in Abia. All right. If that is the case, uh, in Abia State today, I do not know if you have been listening. Uh, there are persons who would see you to be an enemy the moment you mention PDP. Firstly, Naya, what is your reaction to this impression? Secondly, what it does is, it pertain? What, what does yeah, it, 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 it pertain of your party in the state? No, it, it's not just my party. It is unfortunate that people don't understand what the rights of the other individual is or are. That is, the, that is what is responsible for that. Because, for instance, Moses, you have a choice to belong to an organization you want. I shouldn't question you. It is also your choice to defend, your choice and duty to defend whatever organization you belong to. In my family, not every member of my family are members of the PDP. And I don't, I don't bother about what they do in their party. They also should not bother about what I do in my party. I, it is, it, I, whenever I want to talk about my party, it is my duty. And I'm talking about my party on my own expense. It is unfortunate that somebody will see you trying to propagate uh, your party, trying to defend your party, and he, he not sees you as an enemy of his day. When we were in government, we never saw those in your position as enemy. Of, our, of, of the state. No. Uh, the first to give us in this position, we are welcoming to everybody. He didn't dis dis discriminate against anybody. All right, sir. Uh, all right, uh, Yinaya. Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh, let us open the phone lines at this point so that we get uh, please, yeah. uh, the reaction of our listener this morning. 0808 It's been the program, The Abia Democrats. We are everything is democracy keep the calls coming at this point good morning hello you're welcome your name and location please good morning mr ben my name is uh, mr chichoke i'm calling from all right uh, uh i want to say that uh, I who is talking all right just listen I please said, i said chichoke from ben the road can you hear me now I can hear Chijoke from Ben the Road. Chijoke, welcome. Yes. Thank you, sir. I want to say that uh, the uh, issue about LSOT going to court during uh, 2015 is about the uh, issue of a uh, solid mandate. 
And you cannot combine stolen mandate with the mandate of uh, abeyance. The 2015 election is a well-known election that w w was conducted in a fraudulent manner and manner. So I want to say that uh, Alessotti has every right to fight for his mandate that time. All right. But now, uh, okay, okay, and you. Is, okay, okay and Hiwe is fighting the mandate of audience, and nobody is begging him. No, we are not afraid of him. Let the PDP go to court, and at the end, to end in praise. Thank you. All right, thank you. Again, I will allow you to react to it, but let us uh, keep taking calls at this point. Welcome to the program. He, he, uh, good morning. Good morning. Mr. Welcome. Ben. Your name and location, please. Who say man knows his name? I'm calling from where. Good morning, Mr. Engine Apollo. Good morning, all. Okay, please, uh, I want to appreciate you for coming to the Latin area. This is politics. Um, PDP is a family, is a stronghold. All those things you said, when our current government, our governor, we are in the other side uh, of the, uh, when LKD pass and other PDP generals, they, they criticize the PDP government. Most of those things I are saying, when I do tell people that talk is very cheap, if you look at it, when you are not, if you look at it, if they put you there, you say, I'm not saying that he has all about, there are some areas that Mr. Government, uh, Mr. Governor and the, uh, his administration has gotten it wrong. The issue of uh, holding um, 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 uh, salaries of uh, uh, um, um, uh, um, uh, local government workers, except that they're threatening to go on strike before you lose the money. Nobody stops you from as in doing verification. Nobody stops you from getting out original the ghost workers in the state. But all we are saying is make public the names that you alleged that they are ghost workers and prosecute those that are involved in it. Because these are people who right. make money. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Your so point. I'm encouraging you to keep doing the opposition job. This is your job. So nobody should come and tell us that uh, this is a stage where my mother All right. Is. Thank you very much. Let us speak with the next person. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning. I am Tukunwe. Uh, I want to tell uh, uh, this is uh, listen that uh, okay, uh, I can barely hear this caller. All right, uh, please uh, do want to redial the number. We could not uh, hear you clearly. Uh, remember that this is uh, the Abia Democrats. Keep the cross coming at this point. Zero eight zero eight one eight two six nine. Moses, Moses. Moses, please kindly permit me to, to respond to the two callers. Uh, all, let, let, let us just take this call while you add it up and then uh, give your yeah. reaction. Hello, good morning and welcome. Yeah, good morning. Your name and location, please. Yeah, uh, my name is Chris. I'm calling from Portugal. Hello? All right, go ahead, please. Yeah. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, good morning, uh, please. We are with good morning. you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, we are so sorry about that. Hello, good morning and welcome. Yeah. Good morning, my name. Tell your, your listening that the OKZ Pazo is the last governor of PDP in Abia State, at least for 50 years. What is your name? Please, your name, your name and location, please. I say Chukunyani. Look, is the last governor in state from PDP, at least for 50 years. So let him remain the time. Yes. All right, thank you for uh, your contribution. All right, Ayuna, you're over to you. Let us allow you to react to oh, the ones we've okay. gathered. Th thank you, thank you so much. Mm. Um, Moses, in, in, like, like the first caller. He was so uh, so arrogant in his comments, saying what he does not know. If the matter had gone from the tribunal all through to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court upheld the election of the Bazi in 2015, why would anybody come to talk about the stolen mandate? Uh, it, it, you see that unfortunate uh, comments you hear from people who cannot tolerate the view of others. It's quite unfortunate anyway, but, but I'm happy that that matter went all through to the, to the Supreme Court, where that... Um, that mandate was reaffirmed and um, and so for anybody to think it was a stolen mandate is unfortunate. Now you can now see on the plank they are coming to think that okay and he should not uh, go to court to challenge what they think it's not done properly. Okay he way and those of us in PDP can also say today that the election that held was fraudulent. But what we're saying is 
we are not satisfied with the outcome, and that's why we are in court. If, in the, if at the end of the day, the court upheld the process, we we'll go home and sleep. Mm. So not to come to talk down on the system. I mean, some from nowhere will just despite this uh, speak to the process that was conducted by the system, by the Nigerian system. It's quite unfortunate. That's why we, we should uh, people should be be reminded that they should speak with caution and understand that people in the democracy we are and the program we also is a democracy much as we have the right to vent your spleen to speak your mind but mm-hmm. please also know that we don't infringe on the right of order all right uh, uh, before la, 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 Go ahead. Yeah, you would react. Keep your point. You would react uh, to that. But uh, do it alongside this particular one while we uh, take uh, the next call after your reactions. Uh, last we know is that uh, the confusion, talking about the problem, the crisis at the Abia State House of Assembly has not been resolved yet. Uh, so let us have your reaction on this particular one that involves the PDP members. If, if, if there is anywhere I have interest as a journalist, is in the parliament because I cover the parliament in a, in a national level for years as a journalist, as a reporter. What happens in Abia State House of Assembly is unfortunate and um, undemocratic, so to say the least. It, it also shows that the man today who is the governor of Abia State is not is not a democrat and not ready to agree to the tenets of democracy. And that is what that is what has brought us to where we are today. That a speaker will wait, rise, get up one day and say that he's suspending a member of the House of Assembly for speaking his mind, for speaking to the press. I mean, where would anybody forbid uh, a, a citizen from, from speaking his mind? And that is that is the kind of idea that um, the uh, Governor Lexuti is, is, is at the head of, where a parliament is not allowed to do their job. You understand where you have a mi- minority becoming the majority. Mm. It doesn't bother. It doesn't matter whether you whether you are the, the governor or not we had it in the national assembly and uh, when we had the pdp government and had uh, 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 the other way so the point is that what is happening in Abia state has is unfortunate it's actually presenting Abia as an undemocratic place because the actual uh, organ of government that the pre democracy is the house of Africa, is the parliament not even the judiciary and the executive it is very legislature for a situation where the legislature in Abia has been hijacked you have uh, a speaker who is who is incompetent. There's no other word to so use to say it because you can't wake up and uh, there's no motion. There's nothing to to no member. The member has not been subjected to any disciplinary whatever. And you say you are suspending him. What is the offense? Because he, he addressed the press. He granted the press interview. And what did he say to the press? He is saying allow the right thing to do. You cannot say that the majority in the house will become minority today. PDP is the majority in the house, and you are now bringing an, uh, 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 somebody from the op- from the minority to be to, to be to sit on the seat of the minority leader of the house. All right, this is yeah, not yeah. done in any democracy anywhere. So that is also showing the character of the people today who are in government in Africa, who are not ready to tolerate. That's why you see many of them and their followers not ready to tolerate other people's views. All right. Because in their system, they are not ready to tolerate. Other people are not ready to tolerate the fact that PDP is the majority and uh, somebody is still somewhere because he calls himself a speaker and says he's suspending a member for speaking to the press. I mean, it's unfortunate. He's not ahead of anywhere in the world. All right. Uh, you know, so, yeah. Abians, not necessarily those in the parliament, Abians generally should look at it and understand that that is, the, that is a very, very dangerous signal for us as Abians. All right. Thank very, you. Very dangerous signal. Thank you. On the Abia Democrats today, we have been speaking with the former special advisor on media and publicity to the former governor of Abia State, Okezi Bazo, also former chief press secretary in the person of Egin Naya, Emmanuel Apollos. Thank you so much for your time on the Abia Democrats. Thank you so much, sir. All right, uh, let us do this again. Remember that the program x rays uh, burning issues and matters uh, that take place in Abia State and in Nigeria generally. My name is Moses Ben. Thank you so much for your time. Good morning.